Mothers and fathers, brothers and sisters, aunts and uncles, cousins of course, mops and pops, or if you prefer grandmas and grandpas, and baseball fans everywhere, welcome to the 2019 season of the Valley League. Before we get to tonight's game, let me let you know that these live streams are brought to you by Sheets. Sheets is perfect for busy lifestyles and they're open 24 seven. So grab breakfast, dinner on the go, or a late night snack. With nearly 600 stores in six states, there's always a Sheets near you. Sheets run and done. This live stream is also brought to you by Subway. Check out Subway's delicious new club collection, the new State Club, the new Southwest Chicken Club, and the American Club. Subway, make it what you want. This live stream is also brought to you by Grace Burroughs, New York Times best-selling author and baseball friend to the Valley Baseball League. Grace Burroughs, she believes in love and baseball. Bottom line, if you can't find love on the baseball diamond, take a look at graceburrows.com. Now, here are your announcers with tonight's game. Welcome to Integrity Home Mortgage Park at Kate Collins Field in Waynesboro, Virginia, in the heart of Virginia's Shenandoah Valley. It is Thursday, June 20th, and on behalf of the Valley Baseball League and the Waynesboro Generals, welcome to this live stream tonight. The Waynesboro Generals are taking on the visiting Stanton Braves. Hello, everybody. I'm Ty Comer. Glad you could join us tonight for this beautiful evening. We had a little bit of rain earlier, but it seems that we've all cleared up and we're ready to go. So, as we mentioned, this visiting Stanton Braves coming in tonight. After a game off last night, they got rained out. But the last time these guys took the field was at Newmarket back on Tuesday. They took a 7-1 to one loss in that one, moving their record to 10-6. and six. And It was a, a story of the Braves making a few errors on defense and the Rebels uh, really playing a solid game all the way around. Seven runs on eight hits, only one error for the Rebs. Uh, a couple guys that played well in that one. Andrew Check uh, just continues his hot hitting season. He was two for three to move his batting average up to 382 and uh, has just been one of the guys that has kept this offensive float for the Braves. He's driven in 27 runs to this point, which is an unbelievable stat. 27 runs driven in in just 16 ball games. Um, it's, it's tough to drive in one run per game, much less drive in almost twice <laughs> twice the number of, of runs that you've had games. So uh, that is for the visiting Stanton Braves. Now last night for the homestanding Waynesboro Generals, they were on the road. They were uh, in the midst of a back-to-back -back road game. They played at Percival on Tuesday. They took the win in a rain-shortened game there, and the score ended up being 7-1. to one. Then last night against the Woodstock River Bandits, a team that's pretty solid in the north right now, 7-7 seven and seven when they came into that ball game last night, and uh, just a game and a half out of first place of the Strasburg Express. And, well, Waynesboro got off to a great start. They scored eight runs in the top of the first inning. They sent 13 batters to the plate, 20 runs on 16 hits, and uh, the Generals did make three errors last night. That's a bit uncharacteristic, uncharacteristic of what they usually do, play pretty good defense, just a little bit over an error per game. And then the uh, River Bandits actually out-hit the Generals. They were 18 hits to just the 16 for the Generals, and uh, they picked up 10 runs. But the big difference in that ball game, they made seven errors, seven errors that allowed a lot of unearned runs for the Generals. The Generals won that ball game 20 to 10. Yes, you heard that correctly. It is not a football game. 20 to 10 last night, and the game well over four hours there at Central High School in Falcon Field. So now let's tell you about tonight. Let's set the lineups for each team first. We'll start with the visiting Stanton Braves. Leading off and playing second base will be Kent Rooklyn. Kent, really good start to the year at this point, uh, up there in the 380s, 372 that is. Eli Davis will hit second and play right field. He's hitting 258. Andrew Check will be the third hitter and play first base. And the big man from Walsh University hitting 382, one of the player of the year candidates early on in this season. Logan Worley, former general, played a couple games here in Waynesboro and then ended up moving over to Stanton. He's hitting in the four hole. He's playing well this year, 343 batting average. Duncan Pastore, also hitting well for the Braves. He'll hit fifth and play third base. He's hitting 280. Ryan McCarty, one of the best D3 players in all the land, says Coach Ryan Mossman of the Generals. High praise for the shortstop in tonight's contest. He's hitting 179. 
Tyler Blom, the catcher, will get his first action in the Braves uniform tonight. Uh, he is coming in uh, pretty fresh, so uh, good, good to have fresh legs behind the dish. Colin Brophy will play center field from George Washington University. He's hitting 230. Logan Flood will hit ninth. On the mound for the Generals, or excuse me, for the Braves, Bailey Hall. Bailey Hall from Eastern Mennonite University in nearby Harrisonburg uh, has had a pretty good start to his year so far as well. Now for the home team. Starting at shortstop tonight, a little bit of a switch up from what he's used to at second base. Kobe Lopez, the little man from Florida International University. Kobe hitting 311 to start this to start the game. Seth Kennedy, his collegiate teammate, will be the DH and hit second. Ethan Cady will be the first baseman and hit third. He had two doubles in that win over Woodstock last night. Wes Clark continues to swing the bat well. Had another hit last night, 463 batting average and uh, a short outing for him last night. He didn't play uh, all that much last night. Played in the first couple innings and then got taken out. Bryce and Worrell will hit in the five spot. He had a home run robbed of, uh, of his record over at Percival on Tuesday night. They hit one in that range shortened inning and they had to revert back to the seventh. So Bryson just with one home run uh, on, the, on the year. It would have been two home runs in four ball games for Bryson. Good power guy. Jackson Tate will hit sixth and play center field. Jack Murphy will hit seventh and play left field from St. Mary's College. Jack hitting 192. Back to Jackson Tatum. Missed his average 265 on the year. Jackson Green having a rough go of it so far is Ofer on the season, uh, but uh, will play third base tonight and hit eighth. Brad Burkell will get another chance. He is Ofer the season as well, but uh, the University of Houston freshman or just finished up his freshman campaign. He's looking to get going here uh, in Waynesboro. On the mound tonight, Bailey Wimberly. Wimberly in his last contest uh, got roughed up a bit. Just threw a couple innings in that first game of the doubleheader for Newmarket or against Newmarket. That was back on Sunday. So that is your lineup. The lineups are set for both teams. And as Bailey jogs out there to take the ball, we're going to pause for the national anthem. And let me see who's singing the national anthem tonight. We probably actually I don't know if we have anybody singing the national anthem. It might just be the uh, the playing of it. Uh, by the way, head coaches for both teams uh, for the generals. Head coach Zach Cole in his fifth year in the Valley, first year here in Waynesboro, and now Tyree Blaylock in his first season as a head coach for the Stanton Braves. So we will go to the national anthem. We have we will have a singer. Aubrey West, a 12-year-old from Kate Collins Middle School, and here she goes. Wow, so I don't know if you guys can hear it very well out there, but that was unbelievable. 12 years old, and she just belted that one out. That was beautiful. Get that girl on uh, American Idol, The Voice, America's Got Talent, something. She, she was impressive. That's one of the more impressive renditions of our national anthem that I've heard all year long. And here we go. I will set that uh, that defense that I was talking about for you for the Gens. We'll set that up for you again. Out in left field will be Jack Murphy and center Jackson Tate. 
Bryson Worrell will play right. From left to right in the infield, Jackson Green at third, Kobe Lopez at short, Brad Burkell at second base, Ethan Cady at first, Wes Clark behind the dish, and on the mound tonight from the University of Mem Memphis, number 21, Bailey Wimberly. Six foot, 185 pound junior from Eads, Tennessee. So far on the year, he's pitched in three ball games. He's started one. He's thrown eight innings, given up just one earned run. I, mean, I had to pause on that one because I had to make sure of it. He's given up three runs, but only one earned. That was that ball game against the Rebels. So he's got a 1.12 ERA. He is 0 and 1 and with that bad luck loss against Newmarket in a game that. The, gen the generals really couldn't get their offense going in that ball game, which is w which was his last appearance. Again, back on Sunday, two innings pitched, three runs, only one of those earned over four hits, uh, two walks, no strikeouts in that one. Yeah, a game that uh, again, the generals really couldn't get the offense going, and another big part of it was that the running game of the rebels was just too much for the battery. It's always hard to tell who they're stealing on. If they're stealing on a pitcher that's slow to the plate, if they're stealing on a catcher's arm, uh, whatever it was, the Newmarket Rebels were very, very efficient with their stolen bases. But here we go. Let's get things going. Bailey Wimberly will face Kent Rookland to get things started. Kent Rookland, 5'11", 175-pound junior from Covington, Virginia, West Virginia University Institute of Technology, and West Virginia Tech for short. And the first pitch from Bailey Wimberly is in there for a called strike. First pitch at 7.05. Sounds like a professional start time there. Beautiful night out tonight. Second pitch also in there for a strike. Listed at 77 degrees, mostly cloudy, but still a beautiful day. Pitch misses for a ball. Sorry, I had my head down there for a moment. Must have been a foul ball there. So it is still 0 and 2. The pitch to Rookland. Fouled away. So four pitches, four strikes for Bailey Wimberly. He's throwing to Kent Rookland, 22 for 59 on the year for a 373 batting average. And those 22 hits, just two extra base hits, has two doubles. This one on the ground to second base, that's Brad Burkell. Throw is in time to first base. And Bailey Wimberly has his first out of this ball game. Bring up number 33, Eli Davis, six foot, 195 pound sophomore from Stanton, Tennessee, and Arkansas State University. Stands in against Bailey Wimberly. First pitch is swung on, hit well out into center field, and that's going to drop in front of Jackson Tate, who was coming in to get it. And it'll be the first hit for the Stanton Braves, and it goes to Eli Davis. I didn't try to do too much with it. Took the pitch that he was given and just looped it out into center field. Not all that hard hit, but it'll do the job. And anytime you can get a man on, the guy that strides to the dish right now, that's a good thing for your ball club. Andrew Check, six foot six, two hundred and sixty-five pound senior, and he's first pitch swing. This one over the head of Kobe Lopez out into left center field. Around second base comes Davis, and he is going to be safe. Got under the tag there of Jackson Green at third base. So back-to-back -back singles on back-to-back -back pitches for the Braves. Uh, has runners on the corners and just one away. I bring up the DH, Logan Worley. Logan, a junior from Griffin, Georgia, and young Harris College. Good RBI situation here. Pitch from Wimberly is outside for a ball. Well, as we mentioned, Wimberly didn't give up a lot of hits against Newmarket. It's just the offense and the uh, small bit of offense that Newmarket got going with the running game it really was his undoing. This one fouled straight back. Now one ball and one strike with one away here in the inning. Greg Howard, our home plate umpire. Mark Yoder, our field umpire. 
pretty good crowd always is when Stanton comes down the road. Just a short 10 minute drive between Stanton and Waynesboro. Pitch misses down low for a ball, two balls and one strike. In fact, so short that the coaches and the uh, organization feel comfortable in allowing players to drive back and forth. They don't need to get a charter bus. They don't need to waste the money on that. And it's just a short trip for the players. This one on the ground to shortstop. Let's see if the Generals can get two. On to second for one. On to first base. In time. The Generals get out of it on a great double play turned. Started by Kobe Lopez at shortstop. Brad Burkell turned it over from second base and delivered on to Ethan Cady in time to get out of the inning. Well, the Braves get no runs on two hits and no errors, and we will go to the bottom of the first. And we'll set those lineups and that defensive rotation here in just a moment. On the bases, As we mentioned, let's go ahead and set that lineup. Kobe Lopez again playing shortstop. Nice turn there from him. Good start to the double play. We'll lead off. Seth Kennedy will hit second. Ethan Cady will hit third. Wes Clark fourth. Bryson Worrell fifth. Jackson Tate sixth. Jack Murphy seventh. Jackson Green eighth. And Brad Burkell ninth. Now setting the defensive rotation for the Stanton Braves. Flood will be in left, Brophy in center, Davis in right, Pastore at third base, McCarty at sec or shortstop, Rockland at second base, Check at first base, Tyler Blom behind the dish, and on the mound tonight for the Stanton Braves, Bailey Hall. Bailey, tall righty, six foot five, 200 pound senior from Daleville, Virginia, goes to nearby Eastern Mennonite University. He's got three games under his belts, all starts. He's 1-0 on the year with a 4.69 ERA. He's thrown 15 and a thirds innings, giving up just 11 hits, eight runs, eight earned runs, and seven walks. Ten strikeouts over that time as well. In his last appearance, that was back on June 13th against Harrisonburg, he picked up his first win of the season. He went five innings, gave up just three hits, two runs, both earned, walked four, and struck out four. So, Bailey Hall, a very competitive opponent out there on the mound, will take on Kobe Lopez to start things out here in the bottom of the first. If you joined us just a little bit late, you missed a key double play turned from Kobe Lopez onto Brad Burkell. Great Bailey Wimberly got out of that inning. First pitch from Hall is in there for a strike to Kobe Lopez. Kobe batting 311 on the season. Knocked a couple of doubles last night. This ball hit sharply on the ground. Nice play there by Pastore across the diamond in time for out number one. Ball was hit well, but Pastore made the, made the play and then knew he had enough time since it was hit so hard and he was in already protecting against the bunt on Lopez. And he had plenty of time to deliver over to first. Didn't rush the throw through a strike. Now here's Seth Kennedy. Kennedy batting 400 on the year. Pitch down low for a ball. Also from Florida International University. Hall working quickly. And this one is going to hit Seth Kennedy. And down to first base he goes. Now, it's a weird stat, but the Generals get hit by a ton of pitches. As a team this year, in just 13 ball games, they've now been hit 27 times. So coming into this contest, he had been hit, or the team had been hit twice per game. And now we're gonna have a discussion with Greg Howard and Mark Yoder, and I don't know what the discussion is, but Yoder walks away grinning and laughing and Greg Howard walks away a little, he looked a, he looked a bit serious. Not to pull a, a line out of the Joker's book, but why so serious? Well, one away, Seth Cady, or, or excuse me, Seth Kennedy at first, Ethan Cady at the dish. Cady will take a strike. Cady from East Tennessee State University, where he plays for the Buccaneers in the Southern Conference. 
pitch up high for a ball. One ball, one strike. Well, it was good to see Katie get going last night. Had two doubles in a game that he was subbed into a bit late. 206 batting average now for Ethan. Ball swung on and missed. One ball, two strikes. Ethan, one of those guys that is a, a huge confidence type guy. Needs needs something to get, get going for him for his confidence to raise up a little bit. He told me last night it's about time. This ball fouled straight back. Hangs in there at one ball and two strikes. Kennedy strides off first base. He stole his first base back on Tuesday against Percival. This ball skied in deep center field. Not deep. Center fielder comes in and has it for an out. Colin Brophy will put out Ethan Cady for out number two. I bring up the dangerous Wes Clark. Wes hitting 463 on the season leads the Generals with two home runs. Generals not a big power hitting team. They do have quite a few extra base hits. They've got 39 extra base hits but uh, 30 of those are doubles, so not a lot of home runs being hit by the Gens to this point. This one misses up high for a ball. They've actually got five home runs on the season as a team. Three of them came last week against Percival on the road in Fireman's Park. We've only seen one hit here by a general. That was Bryson Worrell back on Sunday in the doubleheader versus Newmarket. This pitch rides inside, and a good count for Wes Clark. Wes just finished up his freshman season at South Carolina playing for the Gamecocks. Didn't get a whole lot of time at the, uh, the SEC powerhouse. This one fouled straight back. Making the most of his time here in Waynesboro, though, as we mentioned, that 463 batting average is a guy that uh, has just really kept Waynesboro afloat. Been one of the most consistent hitters all year. Got five doubles, a triple, and two home runs, 12 runs driven in. Pitch is in there for a called strike, even evens the count at two balls and two strikes now. Well, deuces are wild. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Ethan Cady, excuse me, Sean Kennedy at first. Seth Kennedy, I'm struggling with that one. Fouled straight back. We'll do it at two balls and two strikes again, and I'll get a redo. So Seth Kennedy is at first, Wes Clark is at the dish. Bailey Hall trying to work a somewhat clean first. He did hit Seth Kennedy with the pitch. Kennedy off with the pitch for a second straight one. And this one is fouled back. So interesting to see Coach Cole has started Seth on the two ball, two strike count with two away. It's a decent running count as anything in the strike zone that would be easy to throw for a catcher is most likely going to be swung at. Pitch just misses for ball three. I thought Greg Howard might have thought about ringing him up there. But now it'll be full count. Andrew Check will play behind the runner at first, and Seth Kennedy will get a head start. Here's the pitch. This one fouled back, and it just gets out of play. And uh, that one, <laughs> Wes is left with just a toothpick part of that bat in his hand as that one was broken and uh, quite a bit of it was broken so he, he had just a little bit left in his hand and he's working good at bat here now. West not an easy guy to strike out in his 41 at bats to this point has only struck out twice you know, not trying to put the broadcaster jinx on him here but those are the numbers. Bryson Worrell waits on deck, hoping to get his chance here in the bottom of the first. Wes Clark would have to reach base somehow for that to be so. Big lead for Seth Kennedy. He's going to get that head start. There he goes. And the pitch is high for ball four. Well, great at bat there from Wes Clark. Quite a bit of pitches there. And that'll bring up Bryson Worrell.
Worrell, the switch hitter from East Carolina. A little bit late getting here, but to this point in the season, 388 batting average, had three more hits last night. And as we mentioned, the average could be a bit higher. Was robbed, and I, I'm not afraid to say that, he was robbed of a home run against Percival. The homer, it was a long shot into the night in right center field, but the rain set in in the, the top of the eighth, and we weren't able to get through the rest of the top, much less the bottom half. This one struck well, but foul. So once that rain set in, the NCAA rules state that it would revert back to the last completed inning, which was the seventh. So Wes Clark had a single taken from him, Jack Murphy had a double taken from him, and Bryson Worrell had a two-run shot to right center field taken away as well. So still looking for that second home run. Big swing and a miss here. 0-2 oh count now from Bailey Hall to Bryson Worrell. Bryson, a well-put-together kid. Six foot one, 210 pounds. This one's skied out towards left field. In comes Flood, and he'll have it for out number three. So a bit of traffic on the base paths for both teams here in the first, but neither able to capitalize. The Generals get no runs on no hits. They did have a walk and a hit by pitch, and no errors made by Stanton. We'll go to the top of the second inning. The Generals and the Braves tied here in Waynesboro. <laughs> So at Sheets, we really exist to make people's lives easier every day. In this moment, we have a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to connect with some of our lucky fans to help make their dreams come true. How are you? I'm Ryan Sheets. Here's a brand new truck for you, man. A once-in-a-lifetime <laughs> dream vacation to Turks and Caicos. <laughs> have you ever been there? No, I've never been anywhere. <laughs> a check for $25,000. This is a testament to why everybody should be a Sheets free. Take me out to the ball game. Oh, wait, we're already here. Barry Lee and Katie G, hoping you're enjoying the old ball game and inviting you to join us each weekday morning from 5 to 10 a.m. on your 92.5 Wink FM. Five, six, and seven in the lineup due up for the Braves. It'll be Pastore, McCarty, and Blom taking their swings off of Bailey Wimberly. Wimberly got out of that inning after back-to-back -back singles given up, had runners at the corners with one away, as the first pitch is fouled straight back for Duncan Pastore. He did get the 6-4-3 double play ball that he was looking for and left our man Pastore on deck. Pitch rides a bit tight. Pastore will take it inside for a ball. Duncan Pastore, 6'3", 175-pound sophomore from Tampa, Florida. Went to Nova, so, so, wow, Nova Southeastern University. Pitch outside for a ball. And 11 games to this point for Pastore. 14 for 50 for a 280 batting average. And this one is going to get into right field for his 15th hit. So already three hits given up by Wimberly, right-hander out of Memphis. And this time the leadoff man is on. Now bring up Ryan McCarty from Yardley, Pennsylvania. Junior, playing in his 11th game this season, is 7 for 39 for a 179 batting average, two doubles, two triples, four RBIs, four home runs or excuse me, four walks and 10 strikeouts. From Penn State Abingdon, this one swung on and missed. Oh, 
on the ground to shortstop. It's Lopez to Burkell across in time for another double play. So two innings, two straight, six, four, three double plays turned by the Waynesboro Generals. And yet again, Bailey Wimberly has managed to roll a double play to get himself out of a bit of trouble. Christian Prophet, the normal shortstop from Florida Gulf Coast, getting a night off tonight. Kobe Lopez playing it well over there right now. That pitch on the outside corner for a strike to Tyler Blom, who is getting his first at bat here in a Stanton Braves uniform this year. Pitch also catches the outside corner. Now Bailey Wimberly quickly ahead 0-2 with two away after giving up that leadoff single. Slider misses outside. Wes Clark nods his head in admiration of the pitch. Wimberly executed it well. Started on the outside corner and then broke it way off of it. Trying to get a swing and miss as he does there. Picks up his first strikeout of the night here in the top of the second and a clean top of the second. Not three up, three down, but he does just face three batters after yet another double play ball. So we'll go to the bottom of the second. The Gens will look to get on the scoreboard off Bailey Hall here in Waynesboro. Mark your calendars now. The Valley Baseball League's All-Star Game is Sunday, July 7th, right here at Veterans Memorial Park on the JMU campus. Please plan on taking in all the action. While the game starts at 7.30 p.m., the fun starts at 3.30 p.m. with batting practice. The 60-yard dash and home run derby starts at 5.20. Tickets are $5 for adults and $3 for kids ages 3 to 12. And if they come in uniform, they get it for free. So mark those calendars, Sunday, July 7th, 7.30 p.m., right here in Veterans Memorial Park. You don't want to miss this. Come and join us and see tomorrow's superstars play. Jackson Tate will start things off for the Generals here in the bottom of the second. He's got a 265 batting average and has quite a few extra base hits to go with it. But really, for all intensive purposes, if you ask Jackson, he has really not gotten it going just yet. And uh, he, the numbers are there. He can do it. Uh, at Lawson State Community College this year, was one of the best JUCO players in all the state of Alabama. 377 batting average with 14 home runs, 41 RBIs. He scored 61 times, and oh yeah, he's got some wheels. He stole 26 stolen bases. So, Jackson, a guy that is a, a five-tool player, was drafted this season. First pitch, skied in the air. That draft process was the 32nd round by the Seattle Mariners, but he will pop out to the second baseman, Rockland here. Excuse me, Rookland. Kent Rooklyn out there at second base. Now to bring up St. Mary's College player Jack Murphy, the left fielder. First pitch struck well down the left field line. It's tailing away and it's going to get past the left fielder. And that's Flood. Murphy motoring into second base. He'll hold up there. He'll have a one out double. Jack Murphy getting it going here. In the middle part of the season. Double down the left field line. Had a 192 batting average coming into today. But was a guy that got off to a pretty painfully slow start. But has gotten it going now. Speaking of a slow start, Jackson Green. Look to get his first hit in a general's uniform. He takes a called strike. Pitch misses down low for a ball. Jackson, a commit to Florida State University here in the uh, in coming season. 
Florida State just got bounced from the College World Series yesterday against Texas Tech. That was their second loss. This ball hit high and deep, but way foul. And not as far foul as I thought, but it was indeed foul. By a pretty good margin. It wasn't one where we had to hold our breath and see what the umpires thought on the home run, non-home run. It did have home run distance, though. One ball, two strikes now from Bailey Hall to Jackson Green. This one's skied in the air. Second baseman going back. That's Rooklyn, and he makes the play. Made that play look a little bit easier than what it actually is, and that'll be an um, out number two. It'll be Brad Burkell taking his swings off Bailey Hall this time around. He takes down low for a ball. Brad, left handed swinging second baseman from Lindale, Texas. Just finished up his freshman campaign where he led the Cougars in stolen bases this year. Big swing and a miss. Houston, one of those teams that a lot of people felt that they got, uh, they got robbed of a regional bid. Or at least making it into the regionals. They thought that they should have been probably the last four in. This one skied in the air, fouled straight back. Catcher goes back. And it's going to land right behind home plate. Did get out of play. A lot of fans there right behind home plate. There were some kids there that didn't want to take a chance on that fly ball. They cleared out. One ball and two strikes to the 5'7 sophomore out of Lindale, Texas. Brad still looking for his first single, first hit, that is. Raquel does a nice job at staying back on that breaking ball and fouling it away. One ball and two strikes. He's trying to get it back to the top of the lineup. This, is, this will conclude the first time through the lineup for the Generals. This one also popped up. Not sure if it's going to stay in play, and they're not able to get there. It landed pretty close to the general's dugout. It was a long run for both Pastore at third and Blom behind the dish. Neither were able to get there, especially with Pastore playing just a couple steps towards the second base bag as the left-hander is swinging. So a tough play, but Brad Burkell gets a little bit more life here. Big hole up the middle in between the second baseman and second base. This one hit into center field. Chases Brophy back a couple steps, but he'll have it. Four out number three. Well, the Generals do pick up their first hit on the Jack Murphy double with one away, but are not able to bring him around. We'll go to the top of the third inning now. No score here in Waynesboro. <laughs> Take me out to the ball game. Oh, wait, we're already here. Barry Lee and Katie G, hoping you're enjoying the old ball game and inviting you to join us each weekday morning from 5 to 10 a.m. on your 92.5 Wink FM.
Back here for the top of the third. Three, three hits so far for Stanton, just one for Waynesboro. It'll be Colin Brophy, Logan Flood, and it'll go back to the top of the lineup for Kent Rooklyn. Well, there has been traffic on the base paths for the Braves. They've gotten their guys on via the singles, but have grounded into two 6-4-3 double plays. And to this point, first pitch misses outside to Brophy for ball one. This one struck well, out towards left center. It chases over Jack Murphy, and it's going to get all the way to the wall. And Brophy motors in. He's going to think about three, but he'll put the brakes on, and he'll have a leadoff double, the fourth hit for the Stanton Braves. Well, the Braves are tired of grounding into that 6-4-3 uh, double play, so instead they just put a man at second base to start things out. We'll see if Wimberley can somehow pull his way out of the uh, the fire here in the top of the third inning. To do so, he'll have to go through Logan Flood. Flood, the left fielder, squares to bunt, and he bunts it right back to the mound. Wes Clark will come out and make the play. Throw to first base is in time for out number one. That goes as a nice sacrifice bunt there for Logan Flood. So it'll be a runner at third base with just one away for the top of the lineup, Kent Rooklyn. Well, they'll take a carbon copy of what he did in his last plate appearance. He grounded out to second base, decently hit out there, but that would bring in a run if he was able to do that here. First pitch swinging, fouls it straight back. Pitch from Wimberley just misses. One ball, one strike. This one also just misses, maybe a little bit outside. Again, appreciate you joining us here on this Facebook live stream, or if you're listening to us on Stretch Internet, we appreciate that as well. Now, there's a lot of other things that you could be doing on this Thursday night. This pitch misses down low for a ball. The NBA draft comes on tonight. Boy, I have seen, uh, you know, ESPN's trying to disguise it as uh, a pre-draft uh, recap of some players that you, you should watch out for. They're using that as an excuse just to watch all these Duke games and watch Zion Williamson as the first pitch, or not the first pitch, but that pitch was swung on and missed by Rooklyn. So it'll fill the count at three balls and two strikes. And now Bailey Wimberly possibly thinking about a strikeout. Maybe seeing the light at the end of the tunnel here to try and get out of this inning unscathed. 3-2. Just misses outside. He had a couple of pitches out there uh, that he just continued to go out for. Give Greg Howard credit. He didn't expand the zone there with two strikes. Runner will be at first and third now. Well, the Generals would definitely welcome their third 6-4-3 double play. They'll welcome any double play of this uh, at this point. But it'll be Eli Davis, left-hander, striding in, playing right field tonight. He's already got a single to center field. This pitch on the inside corner for a called strike. Davis was first pitch swinging in his first plate appearance, so seeing just his third pitch here in a moment. Pitch just misses. Not, got, not getting a lot of leeway off the corners. Hit well, but foul. Over the leaping glove of Katie. Now one ball, two strikes. Strikeout would go a long way into getting out of the inning. 
also a situation here that you got to think about maybe Rooklyn running pitch got him looking strike three got him on the inside corner and it'll be the second strikeout none bigger than that one right there for Bailey Wimberly Well, in order to get out of this third inning unscathed, Bailey Wimberly going to have to go up against the top RBI guy in all the Valley League right here, right now, Andrew Check. And with second base open, they're going to intentionally walk Andrew Check. So they're going to say, yeah, we see your 27 RBIs, and we're going to go ahead and put you on first base. We'll take our chances with Logan Worley, who grounded into the 6-4-3 double play to end the first inning. We see that a lot with first base open. Second base was open, and they still elected to put him on. So a lot of respect for the big man out of Walsh University. This one fouled straight back off the bat of Worley. Well, not the first time that the Generals have intentionally walked check. Actually, the last time Andrew was here, grounded into a double play and grounded out a couple more times and then was intentionally walked. So, hasn't seen it the best here to this point. This one fouled away. Does have a single in this ball game, though. He singled on back-to-back -back pitches there. He was first pitch swinging as well against Wimberley. Speaking of Bailey Wimberly, he's gotten Logan Worley into an 0-2 count with the bases loaded here in the top of the third, trying to get out of it. Pitch just misses down low for a ball. Well-spotted 0-2 count pitch there from Wimberly. Wimberly comes set. And the pitch. This is outside. Goes with the slider that time. Evens the count at two balls, two strikes, and two outs here. Base is juiced from Waynesboro. Wind blowing a tad bit out, not a huge wind. Wimberly gets a swing, and Worley is going to make the Generals pay. He sends this one into center field, and two runs will score. Well, that is definitely the risk you run when you intentionally walk a guy to put another man at second base that wasn't originally there. Now, if Check would have singled, that would have just been one run, but there, Worley singles, and since they moved the man up on to, from second, first to second uh, for Check, well, now it's two runs, and the... Braves have taken a 2-0 lead here in the top of the third. First pitch is in there for a called strike to Duncan Pastore. Well, just when you thought that Bailey Wimberly might be able to get out of another inning with runners all over the base pads, he's not able to do so. This one flied into right field and Bryson Worrell will take it for out number three. But not before some damage was done. Stanton gets two runs on two hits. No general errors. They take a 2-0 lead into the bottom of the third here from Waynesboro. Third Sunday, we're at Royal, Monday we're at Hamilton. And on Tuesday, we're back here at Hamilton with the Woodstock River Band at the front of the time. So, the next 200 games are tomorrow night and Tuesday night. So, tomorrow night, Tuesday night, 
on our next two home games. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, on a three-game road trip. To the bottom of the third we go. It'll be the top three in the lineup for the Generals, Lopez, Kennedy, and Katie. Well, some ominous looking clouds have started to roll in. And it looks like it's coming in from the Stanton area. When I looked at the radar earlier, it looked like there was a huge storm coming, but it was going to miss Waynesboro by a good margin and maybe hit uh, closer to Harrisonburg, about 30 minutes up the road from here. But instead, it does look like we might have some storm coming. Pitch misses up high for a ball. 1-0. and Now in order, as Kobe takes that one for a strike, one ball and one strike, in order for this game to be completed, we would have to complete five innings. This ball struck well down the left field line, called foul. Well, Kobe had a double down the left field line against Percival on Tuesday. Had a couple of doubles last night. One of them was down the line just like that. The other one was just roasted over the left fielder. But three doubles in his last two games. Down to a 1-2 count. Pitch in the dirt for ball two. This one's skied in the air. Blom is back. He looks like he's got it under control. He does. That'll be the first out in the inning. I bring up Seth Kennedy. Kennedy, the designated hitter in today's contest. Pitch misses for a ball. Kennedy has played anywhere from left field to first base. He's also gotten a DH roll a couple of times. This ball into left field for a base hit. Well, for Seth, that's just kind of one of those things that we've come to expect here from Integrity Home Mortgage Park in Kate Collins Field. He has, in his 10 starts, and now you can make it 11. So in his 11 starts now, he has hits in 10 of those 11 starts. So a guy that, if you're gonna put him in the starting lineup, he's gonna have you at least one knock. I bring up Ethan Cady. Pickoff move, not in time. And there must be a few raindrops coming in because I'm seeing some people clear out a bit. Katie with a big hack fouls it straight back. Folks are seeing these clouds roll in and they're making their way to some shelter. There is a little bit of shelter right there by our concession stand. We've got a little bit of an awning over top of it. Pitch is in there for a called strike. It's on the upper part of the strike zone to Ethan Katie. The ball's two strikes, one away. Kennedy at first base. Katie takes up high for a ball. He's 0 for 1 in this contest, flew out to center. Yeah, and here, in fact, does come the rain and uh, sending people scattering. It is raining hard out there. Another pickoff move. Katie just barely gets a piece of it. Well, you got to love the weather app. I look up my weather app in Waynesboro. Mostly cloudy, 77 degrees, zero chance of rain. This one ripped over into the Stanton bullpen. The ball's two strikes still. Excuse me, one ball, two strikes.
Big swing and a miss for Ethan Cady. Just the first strikeout on the record of Bailey Hall to this point. He's done a nice job in his two and two thirds innings to this point. He's only allowed two hits. He's also walked one and hit one with a pitch. So, in total, four guys on base. So, just a little bit over one on his whip. But here's Wes Clark. Pitch misses up high for a ball. Kennedy with an early break, and he's going to have this one standing up. Well, great base running there from Seth Kennedy. He timed out Bailey Hall, who must have had the same time to the plate just about every every time. And this one is chopped to shortstop. Across the diamond, and he held his foot. So that'll be out number three. The Jen Strand, a one-out single from Seth Kennedy and a stolen base by him as well. And we will go to the top of the fourth here from rain-soaked Waynesboro and thunderstorming. And we will be right back here from Kate Collins Field. Top of the fourth we go. Ryan McCarty, Tyler Blom, and Colin Brophy do up. Thank you, Sam. We really appreciate it. Again, give her a big hand, folks. Ryan McCarty and from Penn State Abingdon has played in 10 ball games to this point. Today makes 11. 7 of 39 on the year, 179 batting average. He's got two doubles, two triples, four RBIs, four walks, and 10 strikeouts. One of his two triples on the season was here in Waynesboro. That was a week, well, a little less than a week. It was on Saturday, last Saturday. And he will stride in against Wimberley. Wimberley's had a tough go of it to this point. Two runs on five hits given up in just three innings. But he is right back in there and in the strike zone to McCarty. Pitch is also in there for a strike. No balls, two strikes. Nobody away. Swing and a miss. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night to Ryan McCarty. Wimberly picks up his third strikeout. And Tyler Blom, the catcher, who's had a busy day behind the dish already, will stride to the dish. First pitch misses for a ball. Blom's had a couple of putouts behind home plate. A couple long runs as well for some of the foul balls that might have stayed in play. This ball on the ground to Jackson Green at third. Across the diamond is in time. 
And it's a quick two first outs for the Generals. Here's Colin Brophy. Brophy wearing that uh, number 26 jersey. For anybody doing play-by-play, -play, it's always nice when a team has very large numbers on their back. Their numbers in red outlined in white will take up just about their entire back. On the ground to Jackson Green. Across the diamond, quick. Top of the fourth inning for Bailey Wimberly. Well, one Bailey will give way to another. Bailey Hall will come out for the bottom of the fourth inning. And before we do so, well, let's talk about a little bit of Subway. Now, this live stream wouldn't be possible without the help and support of Subway restaurants. If you like what you're seeing here, be sure to stop by any one of the 39 Subway restaurants in the Shenandoah Valley and thank them by grabbing a bite to eat. Subway, uh, Subway restaurants are also the proud sponsor of the Valley League All-Star Game. You've seen a couple of those uh, ads to this point. They are independently owned and operated. Also, wouldn't be able to do this without Sheets. Sheets is perfect for a busy lifestyle. You can grab breakfast, dinner, or usually in my case, a late night snack while on the go. You can also download the Sheets app. It's built to power your Sheets run. Find your closest Sheets store, add your My Sheets card, buy a gift card, get mobile offers, view nutritional details, and much more. Well, Sheets, one of my favorite spots here in Waynesboro. It is on the way to and from uh, the House of the Lundstroms where I'm staying this summer. I'm basically a, uh, another summer son of theirs. And it, uh, it's, it's right on the way. It's just a beautiful uh, spot to just stop in and pick up some sheets. One of my favorite spots. Another big fan of sheets is uh, our assistant coach Tyler Howe. Tyler from down in Florida, not used to having Sheets restaurants, and he said when he got back into town, he was a former player here in 2015 and 16 as Bryson Worrell swings at the first pitch and misses. But he played here in 15 and 16, said this was uh, the first place he had to stop, and he got back into Virginia. This one skied out towards left field. That'll be the shortstop coming over McClarty, and he'll have it for out number one. Well, it's been a bit of a theme to this point for the Generals that when they can't get that leadoff runner on, they struggle to score runs. And it has kind of gotten that way a bit here tonight in the first four innings. Uh, not, no, wow, zero of the four innings have started with a runner getting on. We had a ground out to third base, a pop fly to second base, pop fly to the catcher, as well as a fly ball to the shortstop, all for out number one. First pitch is in there for a called strike on Jackson Tate. He's swinging at the second and fouling it off. And I tell you what, Bailey Hall is working extremely quick. He's not letting the guys get in and get into their normal routines. That's something that Hall has done well here in the first four innings of work. This one on the ground and fouled away. No balls, two strikes, one away. Jackson Tate at the plate. 265 batting average for Jackson. He picked up an RBI double last night, as well as an RBI double on Tuesday night at Percival. Ripped into left field. That'll be a base hit for Jackson Tate. We've got a pretty good 0-2 pitch to handle there. Did a nice job of ripping that into left field in between third base and shortstop. Now to bring up Jack Murphy. Well, a 192 batting average coming into tonight already is one for one with a double. People would probably look at me crazy if I said that this is the guy that you want at the plate right now, but he is really stinging the baseball. This ball fouled down the right field line. Got in in a pinch hit opportunity last night, was 0 for 1 with a walk. But on Tuesday in Percival, he was 2 for 3, and as we mentioned pregame, got robbed of a double off the wall. So he would have been 3 for 4, and also had a couple of hits in the game prior to that. 
That was back on Sunday versus New Market. Currently in a 1 1 count. Has gotten it going recently. This ball ripped down the right field line and it's going to get down. Jack Murphy headed for extra bases. Jackson Tate had to hold up for a moment and he'll motor into third, but another double for Jack Murphy. Well, there we go. That's what we talked about. Jack Murphy really hitting the ball well as of late. Does again here down the right field line. The ball was so well hit that Jackson Tate had to hold up a bit because it looked like it was kind of right at the right fielder. It did hook away. It didn't give the right fielder a lot of time. Not a lot of hang time on that one. But good to see for Jack, especially with his parents in town. This ball off the bat of Jackson Green is over by first base, and it's going to get out of play on top of the Braves' dugout. Well, if Jackson picks up his first hit here, it would be a great time for it. No balls, one strike. Two runners in scoring position. Ball misses up high for a ball. It'll even count at one and one. Another foul ball, one and two. This one down the right field line, and it's going to be Jackson Green's first hit, and it's going to roll all the way to the wall for extra bases. He's motoring. He's coming for third base, and he's going to have a triple. There you go, Jackson Green. Well, now, I wouldn't be surprised to see these things come in bunches as he was due, and a perfect time for one there. He gets himself right back into scoring position, a two-RBI double for Jackson Green. So we got a tie ball game now. Brad Burkell will step to the plate. And hey, if one guy erases his offer, I think it's time for Brad Burkell to also erase his. We're going to have a mound visit. And you know what? While they have a mound visit, I know this isn't the head coach Tyree Blaylock, but let's talk about Coach Blaylock a bit. First year head coach for Stanton. Last year, or last summer, I should say, he was the assistant coach of the Kituit Ketteliers. That's in the Cape Cod League. So he's seen some good baseball. He, uh, his alma mater is the University of South Carolina, Lancaster. He also played at Lander University for a year. And uh, now has taken over as the hitting coach there at USC Lancaster. He's in his second year there, and Braves happy to have him. It'll be Brad Burkell now. And he's going to lay down a bunt, and it's going to be a bunt single. He drives in a run as well, so he erases his offer this time with a bunt. Well, beautifully played. It was not a suicide squeeze as Green waited until he saw the ball down. And it was just perfectly placed from Brad Burkell. I don't think you could get any better. So that'll go as an RBI single in the book. And it'll bring up Kobe Lopez, and he rips one hard to deep center field. Well, back goes Brophy. He's going to have it. But boy, some excitement brewing here from the offense of the Generals. But Kobe just missed extra bases himself. And that'll bring up Seth Kennedy. But boy, four straight hits there for the Generals, and they scored their three runs in bunches. The single by Jackson Tate got things started. Jack Murphy, Jack Murphy doubled down the right field line to bring runners to second and third. Jackson Green drove them both in with his first hit of the year, a triple down the right field line. And Brad Burkell with a bunt single to bring in Jackson Green. Generals now lead 3-2, to two and off with the pitch is Burkell. He is out. No argument there from Brad. And so it'll be a caught stealing on his record. A nice two to four throw there. Tough to run on Tyler Blom behind the dish. 
But the Generals do get three runs here in the bottom of the fourth. They now lead three to two. They've got six hits to bring in those three runs. We will be right back here from Kate Collins Field in Waynesboro, Virginia. So at Sheets, we really exist to make people's lives easier every day. In this moment, we have a once in a lifetime opportunity to connect with some of our lucky fans to help make their dreams come true. How are you, I'm Ryan Sheets. Here's a brand new truck for you, man. A once in a lifetime dream vacation to Turks and Caicos. <laughs> have you ever been there? No, I've never been anywhere. <laughs> a check for $25,000. This is a testament to why everybody should be a Sheets freak. Well, the Generals bounce back in the bottom of the fourth, adding three runs, three to two now our score, and Bailey Wimberly has a chance if he can get through this one to maybe be the pitcher of record, get himself a win in this Valley League season. To do so, he'll have to go through Logan Flood, Kent Rooklyn, and Eli Davis. First pitch from Wimberly is in there for a called strike. An interesting story about Bailey Wimberly as well as one of his other Valley League teammates. And this pitch is also in there for a called strike. And I'm sure that Bailey hates to hear it, and I'm sure his family members hate to hear it as well because it's more of a, a triumph story for his teammate than it is for Bailey. And I'll tell you about that here after this 0 2 pitch. And got him looking strike three. Bailey Wimberly strikes out another, and we go to the top of the lineup for Kent Brooklyn. But Connor Norby, one of our players here in the Shenandoah Valley, here in Waynesboro, has one collegiate home run in his freshman year, and it was off of Bailey Wimberly. That was when they took each other on during the season in that American Athletic Conference play. This ball bunted. Nice play from Wimberly. His throw is in time for out number two. Well, a good attempt there from Brooklyn. But Bailey Wimberly, very athletic, hopping off the mound, fielding his position, and throwing on for out number two. Well, I bring up Eli Davis. Now Wimberly, just an out away. This ball tapped on the ground, and it will get foul. He was hopping off the mound there as well. Wimberly had a six-pitch inning last inning. This pitch misses down low. And this will be his seventh pitch right here. So has been efficient. And foul at the plate. Gets the count to one ball and two strikes. You know, we talked about and if you guys haven't listened, we do have a new podcast for the Generals. Adam Hawes and myself. It's called The War Room. Check us out. It's on our website. The link is it's to SoundCloud if you guys want to check that out as well. This one, cue ball there at the dish, and it will get fouled. But we talked about how we haven't gotten a lot of length out of the starters. The pitching staff as a whole has done a very nice job. The ERA way down there in the uh, sub-4 area. I believe it's uh, at 3.52 if I'm not looking there at the moment, but I'll check that one out for you. I'll have that stat here in a moment. But uh, they've done a nice job as a staff, but really not a lot of length out of the starters. Just two pitchers to this point have gone five 
in a start, and that pitch misses up high for a ball. Bailey Wimberly trying to become the third. Tyler Shuck went five at Percival on Tuesday night. Eric Sapp went five against Percival, and that was way earlier in the season. This one on the inside corner got him looking strike three. You can add Bailey Wimberly, Wimberly to that list. He gets a strikeout looking, his second of the inning, and we will go to the bottom of the fifth. The Gens up three to two as we leave you here, and we're going to have a word from our sponsors, and we'll be right back after this. Mark your calendars now. The Valley Baseball League's All-Star Game is Sunday, July 7th, right here at Veterans Memorial Park on the JMU campus. Please plan on taking in all the action. While the game starts at 7.30 p.m., the fun starts at 3.30 p.m. with batting practice. The 60-yard dash and home run derby starts at 5.20. Tickets are $5 for adults and $3 for kids ages 3 to 12. And if they come in uniform, they get it for free. So mark those calendars, Sunday, July 7th, 7.30 p.m., right here in Veterans Memorial Park. You don't want to miss this. Come and join us and see tomorrow's Superstars play. Bottom of the fifth, and we're going to have a new pitcher for you. But first, we're going to talk to you about the line of Bailey Hall. Hall surrendered three runs on six hits, all earned. And he is on the hook for the loss. He also just struck out two. All right, so the new pitcher on for the Stanton Braves will be number 12, and that is Reed Salata. Salata, six foot, 180 pounds, out of the University of Maryland, Baltimore. The sophomore from Virginia Beach. A lot of Virginia players on this Stanton Braves roster. For Salata on the year, he'll get action in his fifth ball game. He's got a 5.10 ERA. He's thrown 12 and a thirds innings, given up 14 hits, struck out 11, and walked six. His first pitch to Seth Kennedy is in there for a strike. Second pitch is also in there for a strike, but Kennedy will foul it down the third base line. Kennedy one for one on the contest, hit by a pitch in the first and singled to left in the third. This one misses way outside for a ball. Kennedy hit well, but to shortstop, Ryan McClarty across the diamond in time for out number one. So a 6-3 put out, and that'll bring up Ethan Cady. Pitch misses down low from Salata. Salata got his last action back on June 16th versus Covington, where he went five innings of relief. This ball skied in the air. Blom goes back, gives it a look, but it will get out of play. So one ball, one strike now to Ethan Cady. But Salata, those five innings in relief, allowed just five hits, one run. It was earned. Didn't walk anybody. Did strike out three. So coming off a pretty good outing against the South, Southern Division leading Covington Lumberjacks. One ball, one strike, one away. 
Stanton Braves in town. The Stanton Braves were established in 1915. Ball hit to the second baseman. First, the pitcher's going to have to cover. He does. Nicely defended there for the Braves. Well, a diving attempt by the first baseman, Check, was he was not able to get there. But fortunately for the Braves, Kent Roquelin was there. Gives a lot, of, a lot of credit. And covering first base, he did his job. The PFPs have been done by the Braves. And now two outs here in the bottom of the fifth. Wes Clark is first pitch swinging. He's going to foul this one out of play. Wes has four separate games where he has at least three hits on the season. So, again, a model for consistency. Pitch misses outside. Really just a great kid. He's very humble. Goes about his business. Pitch misses down low for a ball. Two balls and one strike. He's from nearby Lynchburg. I guess technically he's listed as Forest, Tennessee. Pretty close to Lynchburg. Went to LCA. Hit like 700, something crazy there at, at LCA. This one swung on and missed. And for doing so, he was drafted in the 2018 first-year player draft by the Milwaukee Brewers in the 40th round. He elected to forego that and just finished up his freshman campaign at South Carolina. Pitch misses down low for a ball. As we mentioned earlier, didn't get a lot of time for the Gamecocks. But as expected really be a key contributor going forward. Pitch inside and Wes is going to work his way on for the second time tonight via the walk. He's 0 for 1. He did ground out to shortstop. But anytime you can put a man on base for Bryson Worrell, pretty good idea. Worrell from Sims, North Carolina is a switch hitter. We saw him hit from both sides of the plate last night. Had a hit from both sides of the plate. And this one jammed him a bit, but I think it's going to get down into center field. It will. Wes Clark will put on the brakes at second. And two straight runners have now reached. And Bryson Worrell will take a hit any way he can get it. It's a line drive in the books, as they say. And he'll have yet another hit on his season. As I mentioned, he had a 388 batting average and coming into this one, and it'll give way for Jackson Tate. We're going to have another mound visit. An interesting one at that. They do have a right-hander tossing in the bullpen. But Salata, who got the first two outs pretty quickly, has now allowed the last two runners on, but the walk to Wes Clark was in a full count. It was not like he's completely lost composure. It also has a single to center. So not sure what the, the mound visit was about. Maybe trying to, as Barney Fife would say, nip things in the bud and stop things right here. Last two runners have reached. And it's now Jackson Tate from Pike Road, Alabama. Pitch is in there for a called strike. Jackson from Lawson State Community College in Alabama is going to stay in state. He's going to play at the University of Alabama next year. Play for the Crimson Tide. Ball on the ground. It's going to be a tough play for McClarty. They're going to say he got him. I'm not sure I agree with that one, but it's going to be an out either way. So we'll go to the top of the sixth inning now. Jens still lead 3-2. to two. They get no runs on one hit that go around. Braves will try and tie things up, maybe pull ahead here in the top of the sixth. So at Sheets, we really exist to make people's lives easier every day. In this moment, we have a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to connect.
connect with some of our lucky fans to help make their dreams come true. How are you? I'm Ryan Sheets. Here's a brand new truck for you, man. A once in a lifetime dream <laughs> vacation to Turks and Caicos. <laughs> Have you ever been there? No, I've never been anywhere. <laughs> a check for $25,000. This is a testament to why everybody should be a Sheets for you. That'll end the day for Bailey Wimberly. Bailey was pretty strong in his start. He is the pitcher of record. Five strikeouts for Bailey Wimberly. He allowed two runs, both earned on five hits. So he will give way to Zach Blankenship. Blankenship, the lefty. From Fleming Island, Florida, the senior, six foot, two hundred pounds, from Valdosta State University. For Blankenship, he'll get action in his fifth ball game. He's two and zero oh on the year with a three point eight five ERA. He's thrown seven innings. He has allowed five runs, and only three of those earned, and has struck out seven while allowing nine hits and four walks. So for Blankenship. He'll be looking to be the bridge in the bullpen and trying to get it to the ninth. This ball misses up high. He's got a tall task in uh, a few different senses of that, uh, a few different ways of that saying. He's got Andrew Check, is what I'm trying to say, who's a tall player. Not uh, all that well put out by me, but this one fouled up, and it's now one ball and one strike. Check was intentionally walked his last go around. It ended up coming back to bite the Generals a bit as they got two runs instead of just one on a single by Logan Worley, who stands on deck. This ball tapped on the ground and foul. So one ball and two strikes in the lefty lefty matchup of Blankenship and Check. Check the lefty from Reminderville, Ohio. Stands in and will swing and miss. Zach Blankenship gets a big strikeout to start his evening. And it'll be Logan Worley. Worley playing in his ninth ball game. Coming into tonight was 11 for 36 for a 344 batting average. Had three doubles, four RBIs, walked twice, been hit twice, and has struck out just three times. So, he's been pretty solid as an infielder and outfielder for the Braves. We've seen him play both actually here in Waynesboro. First pitch called strike for Blankenship. This one on the ground. Tough hop there for Jackson Green. And we'll have to see how they score that. I think that's going to be an error because I think Jackson probably could have played himself into a better hop. If he comes and gets that a little bit, maybe gets the short hop. If he plays back a bit, he gets the long hop. Uh, I think that goes as an E5 in, in my opinion. Now 
Now this one sharply hit down the left field line, and that error might come back to bite the Gens a bit, as this one's going to be extra bases, maybe. He's in there. So it will be a double for Pastore. Well, nice job from Jack Murphy out there in left field at getting that ball in quickly, making that a little bit closer of a play on Duncan Pastore than what it should have been. But it'll be a double, and runners will be at second and third with just one out. Corners are playing in. Infield or middle infielders are back. This is Ryan McCarty. Langenship misses up high for a ball. Well, if that runner from third were to score to tie things up here. It would undo what has been a pretty good day for Bailey Wimberly. That one fouled off at the plate. Now one ball and one strike. This is Ryan McCarty. McCarty playing in his 11th ball game. 7 of 39, 179 batting average has struck out 10 times. So maybe Jen's trying to find a strikeout victim here as this pitch misses up high for a ball. Now two balls in one strike. And maybe a situation, I'm not sure what Coach Cole will do, but maybe a situation where you don't give in all that easily to McCarty and you take your chances with Blom and see if you can roll another double play ball. The Jens have rolled two to this point. This one's squibbed. Katie's coming on, and he'll have it. So a big second out there for Zach Blankenship. A nice play by Ethan Katie. It'll be a little P3 is what they call that one. And we will go to Tyler Blom. Tyler Blom now, barring pass ball or wild pitch, will have to drive the runner in with a base hit or an error. Blom 0 for 2 to this point in the Valley. Struck out swinging in the second. Also grounded out to third base back in the fourth. Blankenship looking to work around some danger. First pitch swung on and missed. Blom from the University of Virginia Wise. Down in southwestern Virginia. He's from Mechanicsville originally. Pitch in there, got him looking for strike two. Now an 0-2 count for Blankenship. Zach, one of those guys that off the field, one of the funniest guys you'd know. And then once he steps in between those lines, he's able to flip a switch and becomes one of the most serious and competitive guys that you know. You gotta be competitive here, 0-2. Got him, swinging, strike three. Big strike out there with two runners in scoring position for Zach Blankenship. He works around an error and a double. So the Stanton Braves get no runs on one hit and one general error. We will go to the bottom of the sixth. The Gins trying to get some breathing room here on the scoreboard from Waynesboro.
Ryan Smith now on for the Stanton Braves, appearing in his sixth ball game. He's got a 4.90 ERA over seven and a third innings pitched. He's allowed eight hits, ten strikeouts, and five walks, and has allowed four earned runs, all four runs earned. Again, for that 4.9 ERA. So he takes over for Reed Salata. Salata got through just uh, one inning. Skated through it. And now we'll have Jack Murphy leading things off. Pitch misses outside from Ryan Smith. Six foot, 198 pounds from the College of Charleston. This ball skied in the air to left field. He'll have it for out number one. That's Flood out there. So yeah, Smith from the College of Charleston. He's from Hazard, Kentucky originally. Made his way down there to beautiful, beautiful Southern Carolina. If you haven't been to Charleston, that's uh, one of those places that you got to put on your list. First pitch to Jackson Green misses outside for a ball. Green picked up his first base knock in his last plate appearance. It was a big one. A triple down the right field line to drive in two. He takes a strike right there. One ball and one strike from Smith. This one's skied in the air. Down the right field line, long run, and he's not able to get there. Well, credit the right fielder, Davis. That's Eli Davis out there with a long run, similar to the triple that Green hit. Green hit that ball pretty well down the right field line, but a great attempt by Davis. Just came up short, and then it happened again here on that foul ball. One ball, two strikes. This one hit down out towards right field. Long run for Davis. He tries to dive again, but can't get there. So now Jackson Green, as we mentioned, just needed that one to break the seal a little bit. And now has two knocks in this one. He's two for three. Now Eli probably trying to catch his breath a little bit out there after diving for greens on the triple, diving for greens on the foul ball, and now diving on the, the green single. He's been put to work. Burkell hits this one well and in a little bit on Davis, who has to come in. Uh, he was a little bit surprised at that one. A little bit of a top spinner there for Brad Burkell. That'll be in F9. Eli Davis, try, again, trying to catch that breather out there, but the general's going right back after him. Kobe Lopez will now stride to the dish. They're two away in the inning. Kobe 0 for 3 to this point. It's this one on the ground to second base. That's Rooklyn over to first in time, and it's a quick inning here in the bottom of the sixth. We'll go to the top of the seventh. Again, the Braves trying to pull even or maybe pull ahead. We'll have to see who the Gens turn to out of the bullpen this time around. It looks like Zach Blankenship will be back out there. So, three to two, your score here from Waynesboro. We'll be back in just a moment. So at Sheets, we really exist to make people's lives easier every day. In this moment, we have a once in a lifetime opportunity to connect with some of our lucky fans to help make their dreams come true. How are you, I'm Ryan Sheets. Here's a brand new truck for you, man. A once in a lifetime dream vacation to Turks and Caicos. <laughs> have you ever been there? No, I've never been anywhere. <laughs> a check for $25,000. This is a testament to why everybody should be a Sheets for you.
Now Zach Blankenship, as we mentioned out there for a second inning of work, he'll have the eight, nine, and one hitters for the Stanton Braves. It'll be Colin Brophy, Logan Flood, and Kent Rooklyn. Well, if for some reason you stepped away in the top of the third and the bottom of the fourth, then you've missed all the offense to this point. All the scoring for both teams have been done in just one frame. For the Braves, it was back in the third. That started with a double by Colin Brophy, the guy that's standing at the dish right now. He ended up coming around to score, as did Kent Rooklyn in that one. Pitch misses outside for a ball to start things off for Brophy. Ruffy, the right-handed swinging center fielder out of George Washington University. Played on a loaded team there for the Colonials. This one fouled off. A couple guys on that team that have played in the Valley League before. The biggest name being Dom D'Alessandro, the guy that led the league in RBIs last season. Pitch is in there for a called strike. Now one ball and two strikes. We're in the top of the seventh here from Waynesboro. Pretty briskly played contest. 8.35, so just about an hour and a half under our belt. Pitch misses inside, evens the count at two balls and two strikes. This one skied way up there in left field. Jack Murphy under it, and we'll have it for out number one. Well, Brophy put a charge into it. It was just way, way too high. And Jack Murphy took a couple of steps to his right and has it for out number one. Logan Flood stepping in. You got to think Blankenship probably thinking out there that if he can get through this one, keep the guys off for the top, that that would be ideal. First pitch misses inside for a ball. This one just misses outside. Judging by the body language of Blankenship, he wanted that one. But did not get it on Logan Flood, the six foot three, 200 pound sophomore from Brooksville, Florida. Went to St. Leo College. Big swing and a foul ball. I think that one caught Flood in the batter's box. He'll walk that one off. He's playing in his 12th ball game today. It is 0 for 1. Did have a sacrifice bunt back in the third. Now on the year coming into tonight's contest, 8 for 44, so he had a 182 batting average. Two doubles, five RBIs, five walks. And has been hit by one pitch and has struck out 12 times. He struck out his 13th time in the fifth. And he's going to foul this one off, and Blankenship will look to maybe strike him out for his 14th time. Going back to last inning, Zach did pick up two strikeouts. The one that he got against Tyler Blom with runners at second and third and two away was the bigger one. The other one was against Andrew Check, which was a big one in its own right. This one tapped back to the mound. It's going to be a long run for Blankenship. He's just going to hold on to this one. It'll be an infield single for Logan Flood and a tough luck base hit for Zach Blankenship. So one of those swinging bunts there with two balls and two strikes. And that'll bring up the second baseman from West Virginia Tech, Kent Rooklyn. Rooklyn 0 for 2 in this ball game. Walked and scored a run back in the third. This 
ball on the ground. Generals looking for their third 6-4-3 double play, and they've got it. It ends the seventh inning. We'll go to the bottom of the seventh. Jens clinging to that 3-2 lead here from Waynesboro, Virginia. Well, after the seventh inning stretch, it'll be Seth Kennedy, Ethan Cady, and Wes Clark looking to maybe provide some insurance runs here for the Generals. Ryan Smith out there for his second inning of work. Gets a swing and a miss from Kennedy. Seth one for two in this ball game, singled back in the third, stole second later on in that inning, but uh, was not able to be brought around, so Seth looking to maybe score a run in this contest. Pitch outside for a ball. One ball and one strike. Ryan Smith still out there. Be his second inning of work from the College of Charleston. This one misses down low and away. So now two balls and one strike. This one just misses. Good hitters count now for Seth Kennedy. Kennedy, the league leader and triples. Swung on and missed. He's got three. He's got a bunch of guys chasing him with two. But Kennedy has three. Picked up a double last night. And this one will miss outside for ball four. So a leadoff walk will get things started here for the Generals. And Ethan Cady will stride to the dish. Maybe. And no, he will not. It will be a pinch hitter. So Katie's day will be done at 0 for 3. And it looks like number 33, Joe Kinker. Well, Kinker will be pinch hitting. 214 batting average for Joey. He'll hit with Kennedy at first base. First pitch is in there for a called strike. Kinker still looking for his first extra base hit. He's 6 for 28 to this point, 214 batting average. And he's got four RBIs. He has walked 12 times. This one sharply hit at the second baseman. Kennedy was off too far, and it's going to be a 4-3 double play. So as quickly as the inning got started, it is now a little bit in doubt. It's two outs on the double play. It's up to Wes Clark to get things started now, and he swings at the first pitch and fouls it straight back. The Generals have not scored since the bottom of the third. Wes, Wes asking to make sure that he can uh, get in there and get settled in. That's something that 
A couple of these Stanton pitchers have done a little bit. Ryan Smith working very quickly as he's throwing his next pitch. This one also misses outside. Two balls and one strike. Maybe trying to get Zach Blankenship out there for another inning or trying to speed things up, trying to get his offense back in there. But Smith and Bailey Hall, the starter, both working quickly. Misses high and in on this one. Three balls and one strike. And this one, if you're a Generals fan, probably one where you'd like to see West take one of those big hacks. This one rides inside. And I'm not sure if it got him or not, but it's ball four either way. So Warrell, or excuse me, Wes Clark will work his way on via the free pass for the third time tonight. He's just 0 for 1. He grounded out to shortstop back in the third. That'll bring up Bryson Warrell, who is 1 for 3. He's singled to center on a looper. Bailey Hall will miss, excuse me, not Bailey Hall. Pitch misses outside. He was the starter. We're now on to Ryan Smith. Ryan Smith misses outside to the big left-handed hitting Bryson Worrell at this point. This one struck well out towards center field. It's chasing him back. He's looking up and he is not able to get there. This one's off the wall. In comes Wes Clark. Worrell headed for third base. It's going to be close. And he is safe at third and Wes Clark will score. Well, kids, that's, that's a big teaching moment for young players right there. If you are running the bases with two outs, make sure you are busting it all the way around because if Worrell is tagged out there and Wes Clark hadn't touched home plate yet, then that run does not count. So with two outs, really run the ball, run the bases hard. But it's, uh, it's a moot point there as the triple will drive in yet another run and a big hit there for Bryson Worrell to make him two for four. First pitch to Jackson Tate is in there for a called strike. Well, Brophy, the center fielder, made a long run and I thought he had gotten there, but then I Saw the ball glance off the center field wall out there on that black windscreen. Pitch misses outside. Evens the count at one ball and one strike. So the Generals do get at least one run of insurance here. And now Jackson Tate trying to add another. Hit hard, top spun, over out of play. One ball, two strikes. Ryan Smith from the College of Charleston dealing to Jackson Tate, who will play his college ball at Alabama. Pitch high and tight. Four ball, two evens the count at two balls, two strikes, two away. Inside for ball three. The Gens have picked up nine base hits. Able to scratch across four runs now. It's been a well-played ball game. Only one error made betwixt the two teams. This one skied in the air. A lot of foul territory down the right field line. And Davis again going for a long run, but can't get there. That'll be a foul ball. Well, if nothing else, Eli Davis has gotten his wind sprints in out there in right field today. Tate will foul that one straight back, and we'll do it all over it again at three balls and two strikes. Jack Murphy waits on deck. He's two for three today with a couple of doubles. So for Smith, this is the guy that you probably want to go after in Jackson Tate. Smith comes set, and here's the payoff pitch. Swung on and missed. Jackson Tate will go down on strikes, and Smith will get out of the inning with no further damage done. But the big triple by Bryson Worrell off the center field wall. We'll make it 4-2 to two here from Waynesboro. The Gens on top, and we'll have to see who they turn to. we got a man running in out of the bullpen. When we return, we'll give you his numbers from Waynesboro, Virginia, at Cape Collins Field. 
Hey baseball fans, Graham Knight here for the Valley Baseball League. Just wanting to give a shout out to one of our newest sponsors, Steven Toyota. Steven Toyota is in Harrisonburg, Virginia. They've been an avid sponsor of the Harrisonburg Turks for years. I want to let you know that I'd buy a Toyota from them and I'm thrilled to introduce them to you as our Southern Division sponsor. That means every time a team from the Southern Division, whether it's Harrisonburg, Stanton Braves, the Waynesboro Generals, the Charlottesville Tom Sox or the Covington Lumberjacks, whenever they play anywhere, you'll be seeing a Steven Toyota commercial in those live streams. We couldn't do these live streams without them. So a warm welcome to Steven Toyota from Harrisonburg, Virginia. If you're looking for a car and you're anywhere near Harrisonburg, please stop in and see Ryan. Let him know that you appreciate his help with these live streams and take a good look at their inventory. I love what I saw there, uh, and I got to be honest, I, one of my favorite cars was a 2009 Camry Hybrid. Uh, I sold it to a guy after 150,000 miles. He called me back about seven to eight months later to thank me for selling him that car. He'd actually gone another 50,000 miles in it and was just putting a new set of tires on it. So if you're into Toyotas and you're anywhere near Harrisonburg, give our newest sponsor, Steven Toyota, a good look. Thank you, Ryan. It's great to have you on our team. If you're buying, you gotta see Ryan at Steven Toyota, where every new Toyota car, truck, van, and SUV is smile priced now to save you more. And every certified used Toyota on the lot is also smile priced at Steven Toyota, where you get more for your trade, more credit options to help you get approved, and exceptional service after the sale, too. If you're buying, you gotta see Ryan at Steven Toyota. Zach Blankenship has done a nice job at bridging to the bullpen. We've got Matt Mercer now stepping in. So they'll go from one lefty from Valdosta State to the next lefty from East Tennessee State. For Matt, he'll get action in his fourth ball game. He's got a 1.92 ERA over four and two-thirds innings pitched. He's given up two hits and just one run. It was earned and has given up uh, three walks and struck out eight. Matt coming on here in the eighth. We'll have to see what they decide for the ninth. McLean Harris has been the guy that has uh, been the closer, but McLean threw a decent amount of pitches last night. Eli Davis will take outside for ball one to get things started. A good portion of the lineup to stick another lefty in there. Matt Mercer facing Eli Davis and Andrew Check, who are both left-handed. This one fouled off. Mercer, six foot, 190 pounds from Chattanooga, Tennessee. Just finished up his sophomore campaign for the Buccaneers. And if you want to say he is a Valley League veteran, well, that's fine. He was uh, with Newmarket last season, actually led the team in wins. This one fouled straight back as well. Now one ball and two strikes. So is a Valley League champion. Knows what it takes to win it. As we mentioned, led the team in oh. wins. Is this the hat? One ball, two strike count to Eli Davis, who is one for two, one for three today. And they're going to say he went around on a check swing. So he will strike out for his third time today. He is one for four, but has struck out all three of the times he's been put out. And I bring up Andrew Check. Andrew Check, one of those guys that can change the game on just one swing of the bat. And it's a good thing that nobody's on for him here. He's one for two. He singled back in his first plate appearance on the first pitch he saw today. Was then intentionally walked with just second base open. Ended up getting two second base on a single by Worley. And then struck out in his last plate appearance. First pitch he took was outside from Mercer. The second pitch is taken in there for a called strike. Beautifully spotted there from Mercer. One ball, one strike, one away here in the top of the eighth. Big swing from Check, not able to catch up to a heater. Ball misses low and away. Check swing and they'll appeal down to first base where they said he did not go around.
This one fouled way out of play, and I believe that one's going to make it all the way onto the softball field, and it does. Some kids trying to hop the fence for that one. This one misses outside to check. It'll fill up, fill up the count at three balls and two strikes. Well, Joey Kinker stayed in, and he is playing first base for Ethan Katie, who he pinch hit for. All the rest of the defense stays the same. This one sharply hit out towards left field, and it'll be a single for Andrew Check. He's used the other side of the field. Both of his singles have been the opposite way today. And that makes him two for three. Got to bring up Logan Worley. Worley from Young Harris College is one for three. Does have the big two RBI single back in the third that has accounted for all the runs that the Stanton Braves have put up to this point. Really also reached via the error back in the sixth. This one skied out of play. No balls, two strikes. Pitch misses up high for the first ball of the count. Now one ball and two strikes. One away here in the top of the eighth. Generals leading four to two. Jen's also out hitting Stanton nine to seven at this point. And the big key in this ball game that the Jens have rolled three six four three double plays. And really kept the kept the Braves off the scoreboard. Pitch misses up, up high to Logan Worley. Now two balls and two strikes. Well, it's been a grounder to Kobe Lopez turned over nicely by Brad Burkell three times. and All three times, big situations. Worley swings through this one for out number two. And now we'll have Duncan Pastore come to the plate. Pastore has been a dangerous hitter here for the Braves. Came into tonight hitting 280. But is two for three. Had a single back in the second inning and then had a double back in the sixth. That double really made things tough on Zach Blankenship, who ended up getting a pop fly to the first baseman. As this one is swung on, foul tipped, and is broken his bat. A little bit of a shard goes out towards Matt Mercer. Yeah, that double that Pastore hit put runners at second and third. Blankenship gets a, uh, a, a nubbed, I'd say like a little squibber off the handle there of Ryan McCarty, pop fly who to Ethan Cady, who made a nice sliding catch, and then struck out Tyler Blom to end the inning. So the Generals have had their fair share of jams to pitch out of. Some they've managed to get out of. One of them they were not. That was back in the third. That's the only two runs that the, Re the Braves have scored. This one is also swung on and missed. No balls and two strikes. Mercer trying to get it to the bottom of the eighth. And if there's one thing about the Braves, they do have the comeback ability. Swung on and missed. Wes Clark delivers down to first base in time for out number three. So the Braves get no runs on one hit and no errors that time around. The Jens still needing a bit more insurance uh, for my liking. Four to two your score as we go to the bottom of the eighth here in Waynesboro. <laughs> Mark your calendars now. The Valley Baseball League's All-Star Game is Sunday, July 7th, right here at Veterans Memorial Park on the JMU campus. Please plan on taking in all the action. While the game starts at 7.30 p.m., the fun starts at 3.30 p.m. with batting practice. The 60-yard dash and home run derby starts at 5.20. 
Tickets are five dollars for adults and three dollars for kids ages three to twelve. And if they come in uniform, they get it for free. So mark those calendars, Sunday, July 7th, 7.30 p.m., right here in Veterans Memorial Park. You don't want to miss this. Come and join us and see tomorrow's Superstars play. Now, one of the tickets is as follows. 116 goes to this ticket holder. Here's that number, 524 Three, seven. Five, two, four, one, six, three, seven. You've got that ticket. Come on up to the press box. You just won 116 bucks. Five, two, four, one, six, three, seven. Your attention, please. Now, pitching for the Braves. Now pitching for the Braves, six foot three, two hundred pound righty from Shepherd College, Eric O'Brien. O'Brien appearing in his fifth ball game. He has made one start to this point, but getting a relief appearance here tonight. He's one and one with a 12 ERA. He's thrown six innings, and he's given up nine runs, eight of those earned. Struck out two, walked two, and has given up 13 hits. First man he'll face will be Jack Murphy. First pitch swinging for Jack, who fouls it straight back. Jack is two for three tonight with two doubles. Came around to score on one of those. This one in there for a called strike. Now 0 and 2. Sharply hit, and that's going to get through. So Jack will have his third hit of the night this time, a single into left field. A good swing there from Jack Murphy, and, and boy, he's really not afraid to go the other way with it. He's, he's singled to right and left field today. Also has his, or excuse me, doubled to right and left field today, and he's also singled to left as well. Not afraid to really lag those hands behind and just drill it the opposite way. Pitch is a ball. Throw from the catcher, Blom, was not in time. And it's Jackson Green. Jackson, two for three today, as a huge two, two RBI triple. That was to tie the ball game back in the fourth. Also had a single back in the sixth. Pitch is in there for a called strike. This pitch misses for a ball. And green skies this one. It's going to get out of play. Two balls and two strikes now with nobody away. Jack Murphy at first base. Not a huge threat to run. Jack told me early in the year, I'm not a guy that's all that fast. Pitch misses down low. Great block behind the dish by Blom. He's, he's a guy that... Uh, Spends a lot of his time drinking protein and, and things of that nature, trying to put on weight and muscle. Uh, and, uh, you know, Brian asked him one night, you know, you're drinking a lot of those. And Jack told him, it's no use for me to get skinny because I'm not that fast. So this pitch misses to Jackson Green. And the first two runners of this bottom of the eighth will reach base. It'll be Brad Burkell. Burkell, one for three. Had a bunt single back in the fourth. Might be a situation where Brad bunts again. This might be a sacrifice bunt situation, getting runners into scoring position for the top of the lineup. Kobe Lopez, Seth Kennedy, and Joey Kinker. So uh, keep your eye on, on Burkell here. 
Raquel will not square around and will take high for ball one. The 1-0. Swung on and skied in the air. And it's probably going to go as an infield fly. It will be. And it'll be out number one. Well, interesting move there by Coach Cole. Trying, probably trying just to get uh, Burkell some confidence. But now it'll be Kobe Lopez stepping to the plate with runners at first and second. And one away. Not Kobe's best night at the dish. He's 0 for 4. Pitch is in there for a call and strike. Has hit the ball hard a couple times, though, I will say. His one in the first inning to the third baseman was hit well. His fly ball to center field was hit well, as was his ground ball to second base. So one of those situations where, you know, Kobe's hitting the ball hard, it's just baseball. Sometimes you don't have a lot to, to show for it when you put good pieces of the wood on the ball. One ball, one strike, one away. Runners at first and second. This one taken on the outside corner for a strike. Kobe listed at five foot six, 155 pounds from Florida International. I'll take in the dirt for ball two. Kobe is from Orlando, Florida, and if you're wondering if he was named after Kobe Bryant, you would be correct. That's how I know I'm getting old. This ball struck well into center field, and it's going to get down for a single. Runners had to hold up as it was pretty high hit for a line drive. They had to make sure that Brophy wasn't going to come in and make a spectacular catch. So it'll be a single to load the bases for Kobe. Move his hit streak to three games now. And that'll bring up Seth Kennedy. A good man to have at the dish for the Generals with the bases loaded and one away. Infield is in. First pitch swinging is Kennedy, and he comes up empty. Well, Seth is tied for the team lead in RBIs with 12. This one fouled away. He was tied with Wes Clark, who has not recorded an RBI today, as well as Jackson Tate, who, again, has not recorded in RBI. So Seth with a chance to take the team lead in RBIs right here. Pitch gets away, but no runners can advance. Good decision there from Jack Murphy. Ball glanced off the backstop there and came right back to Blom. Kennedy, one for two today, has been quiet, but has been walked once and as well has been hit by a pitch. Singled and stole a base back in the third. This one, he's going to shoot it through on the right side. They bring one runner around, they're going to hold the other. So he will get his team leading 13th RBI. It's Jack Murphy that comes in to score, and the Gens have a 5-2 lead. Well, the bases remain loaded for Joey Kinker. And we're going to have a full team discussion here on the mound for Stanton. Stanton plays their home games at John Moxie Stadium at Gypsy Hill Park, not too far from here. 
They've got seven championships in their history, but their most recent one was all the way back in 1999. They've been runner-up eight times as well. They lost in that championship series most recently in 2015. Stanton with some very notable pros as well. Aubrey Huff, a guy that, that you think about. Chad Tracy, Luke Scott, John Jay, who's in the league right now. The younger brother of Justin Verlander, Ben. Um, and then uh, currently Will Harris, who's pitched well for Houston this year in the bullpen, in the back end. So a World Series champion who had played in Stanton. Pitch in there for a strike to Joey Kinker. Well, just one away. Good opportunity for the Gens to add more runs. Pitch misses down low for a ball. I do see a right-hander warming in the bullpen for the Generals. We'll have to see if it doesn't become a save situation. And Kinker gets a hold of one, but it will go foul. If it becomes... A non-save situation, maybe they leave Matt Mercer in there, who would in turn pick up the save. But I don't want to get too ahead of myself because Stanton has shown, again, the comeback ability. They came back from 11 runs down in the bottom of the ninth at home against Harrisonburg. Pitch misses up high and evens the count at two balls and two strikes. They were trailing by 11 going into the bottom of the ninth. Ended up winning it in the, t in the bottom of the 13th by a score of, I believe, 15 to 13. This one in the dirt, and Kinker will be out. So a big pitch there from Eric O'Brien. They bring up Wes Clark. Well, Wes just recently lost his team leading RBIs category, so maybe a chance to get back at Seth Kennedy, who's standing nine feet away over there at first. First pitch, curveball. Got him looking for strike number one. Well, it's Wes Clark, and if it gets to that point, Bryson Worrell on deck. Worrell with two knocks today. This pitch misses way outside. For Wes, he's 0 for 1, but has been on base three times. Has walked all three times. I think that last, last time up in the seventh, he might have gotten hit by that pitch. He ended up scoring a run, but what, it was three balls, so I couldn't quite tell, so I just sided with a walk. But Wes will swing through that one, and it'll make the to count one ball and two strikes. Just a little over two hours played here. Much different from last night's contest where we had a, uh, I would say, a, a good four hour and 15, four hour and 25 minute ball game at Woodstock. Pitch, got him looking, strike three. Wes Clark goes down on strikes for just the third time this year. So a big pitch there for Eric O'Brien. They do give up one run, though. One run on three hits and no errors. And we will go to the top of the ninth. The Gens needing just three outs to close the door and pick up their ninth win of the season. Hey, baseball fans. Graham Knight here with the Valley Baseball League. And I want to take a second to introduce you to a close personal friend of mine. Grace Burroughs. She's a New York Times best-selling author, but she's also a close personal friend of yours, even though you may not know it. In fact, without Grace's help, we would not have been able to bring you the playoffs and championships last year. Thanks to her, we were able to cover every single game. And thanks to her, this year we had all the gear we need to support 11 different sites throughout the Shenandoah Valley. Take a second and look at her latest book, When a Duchess Says I Do.
Grace Burroughs, she believes in love and baseball. If you can't find romance on the baseball diamond, take a look at graceburrows.com backslash bookshelf. And if you've already got the love of your life, good for you. Drop Grace a line and let her know that you really appreciate her help with these live streams. It would mean a lot to her. Now back to the action. Matt Mercer out there for his second inning of work. He'll look to shut the door in a save situation. Five to two, your score. The Generals have picked up five runs on 11 hits and they've made one error. The Braves have picked up two runs on seven hits and no errors. So three outs away. And if the score holds as it is, the Generals will move to nine and five. Pull a little bit closer to those Stanton Braves who are 10 and 6. First pitch misses up high for a ball. This one swung on and missed. This one fouled straight back off the bat of Ryan McCarty. McCarty 0 for 3 to this point. Has grounded into a double play, struck out swinging, and popped up to the first baseman. Matt Mercer trying to dispose of him for a fourth time tonight. Here's the pitch from Mercer. Got him looking, strike 3. So it's now up to Tyler Blom, and it looks like this might be a pinch hitter. It will be. It'll be Chet Moore who swings at the first pitch and misses. Chet is from the University of Miami, Satellite Beach, Florida native. Five foot nine, 185 pounds. Been very good for the Braves to this point. As he hits this one well out towards right field, Worrell giving it chase. He'll have it for out number two. Off the bat, that ball looked like it, it might have a chance to get into the gap. But good closing speed out there from the 6-2 right-handed throwing Bryson Worrell. And they'll have it for out number two. The Gens just one out away. It'll be Colin Brophy as the last chance for the Braves. Brophy one for three, 230 batting average. Pitches in there for a called strike. Well, if Mercer can find a way to get out Colin Brophy, he'll pick up his first save of the year. Pitch misses outside for a ball. Win would go to Bailey Wimberly, the starter. He tossed five innings of two run ball. Loss would go to Bailey Hall, the starter for the Braves. Pitches in there for a called strike. Braves now down to their last strike. Pitch down low for a ball. Well, the Generals trying to go 2-0 and on the season against the Stanton Braves. The other time these two teams matched up, last Saturday, Generals cranked out 13 runs. Won that ball game 13 to 5. This one just misses. We thought we might have had a winner right there. But instead, goes to three balls and two strikes. The pitch fouled away.
Brophy one for three, had a 230 batting average coming in. Trying to prolong this ball game for the Braves, Matt Mercer trying to finish it up. Here's the pitch. Hit out towards second base. Brad Burkell is under it, and the Gens will win this ball game by a score of 5-2. to two. Well, As we mentioned, win goes to Bailey Wimberly from the University of Memphis. Loss will go to Bailey Hall. He pitched well, just didn't get enough run support. He is the senior from Eastern Mennonite. He'll take the loss. The save goes to Matt Mercer, and what a save it was. Came in with just a two-run lead there in the bottom of the eighth, or in the top of the eighth, excuse me. Did a nice job there and finished it up nicely here in the top of the ninth. We will take a, uh, a little bit of a break. We'll see if we can get Coach Zach Cole up here at a, a decent time. And uh, we'll talk about the win. So uh, as we mentioned, we'll take a break. We'll talk to our sponsors. And uh, we'll be right back. Well, that wraps up all the action from here tonight. I'm Graham Knight, and on behalf of the Valley Baseball League, we want to thank our sponsors. This live stream was made possible by Sheets. Sheets is perfect for busy lifestyles, and they're always open 24-7. So grab breakfast, dinner on the go, or a late night snack. With nearly 600 stores in six states, there's always a Sheets near you. Sheets, run and done. This live stream is also brought to you by Subway. Check out Subway's delicious new club collection, the new Steak Club, new Southwest Chicken Club, and the American Club. Subway, make it what you want. This live stream is also brought to you by Grace Burroughs, best-selling New York Times author. If you can't find romance on the baseball diamond, take a look at graceburrows.com. Grace Burroughs, she believes in love and baseball. Before we say goodnight, I want to remind you that this live stream is copywritten by the Valley Baseball League and may not be used in any form of media whatsoever without the express written consent of the Valley Baseball League. If you'd like to use our media, please contact me, Graham at isomermedia.com. That's Graham, G-R-A-H-A-M at Isomer, I-S-O-M-E-R-M-E-D-I-A. From all of us at the Valley Baseball League, thank you for watching and good night. Well, not only do we have Coach Cole up here with us, we also have the starter in tonight's contest, Bailey Wimberly. And Bailey, uh, welcome to the broadcast booth, first of all. Thank you. Okay, so for Bailey, you went five innings, gave up five hits, uh, two runs, both earned one walk, struck out five. Um, I felt like for you, Bailey, and you can stop me if you, if you don't agree, but you had some jams to try and work through there, and uh, you managed to do so. Talk, talk about what your thought process was as you were going through on that uh, on those jams. Yeah, uh, today I really didn't have my best stuff. I was kind of feeling a little tired from starting on Sunday too, but whenever they started getting some hits, I really knew I had to bear down and make some good quality pitches in order to, you know, get my infield to give me some double plays to get some out of it. And uh, 
yeah, just making good quality pitches to get soft contact and get out. Well, and even in that, that inning that you gave up the two runs, the top of the third, uh, you really you were one out away from getting out of that jam mm -hmm. as well. Uh, a single up the middle did bring in those two runs. but uh, And at that point, the offense really hadn't gotten going yet, uh, but they, they did a nice job in the bottom of the fourth for you. So talk about what your mindset's like going through there. With not a lot of run support yet, you're just trying to get the, get the maybe the inning over, get it back to your guys. Yeah, whenever they got that hit, I knew how to get out of there and get back in the dugout quick. I wanted to minimize what I had going on. And uh, I mean, we got a team that can just really hit the baseball. So I knew eventually, like, even if I was out, we're going to score a few runs in order to get us back in the lead and win the game. Well, that's Bailey, Bailey Wimberly from Memphis. Bailey, thanks for joining us. We're going to uh, bring on Jack Murphy here. We'll get both those sets of mics on there so we can get the guys that are uh, listening to our audio stream as well as our Facebook Live. And uh, so now, Jack, welcome to the broadcast. Thank you for having me. All right, Jack, three for four tonight, man, two doubles. Uh, you got off to a really slow start, and you know, I've been meaning to talk to you about this for a while. You got off to a slow start, but, man, you are starting to, to really come on. Um, talk about what's changed in your approach, maybe, or, or what's changed? Uh, I was just putting in extra work with Coach Cole um, during the off days and figuring out what was, you know, I was flying balls off the left a lot. Right. And I started to get locked up in my backside, and then, through fixing that and trying to open up my hips a little bit more. I've been able to see the ball longer and make some more solid contact. Well, I know your your mom and your uh, your stepdad are in town uh -huh. for this one. What's it like to have a ball game like that uh, in front of them? I mean, it's amazing to see them because they traveled so far to come to see me. So um, it's always good to have family because you get homesick real fast when you're basically away from home. I mean, this is summer. I was just at college. I haven't seen them in a while. Yeah. I was there for two weeks and then off to Virginia. And so it's great to see them. And, yeah, so talk about that a little bit, too. You guys, especially in the D1 ranks, you guys play all year long. Uh, you don't see them from, I guess, uh, I'm guessing January. Uh, and you play all year, all spring long, and then you, you're leaving here for summer ball. And talk about what, maybe how tough it is. Um, yeah, it's pretty tough. Luckily, uh, because my parents lived only 20 minutes away from my college, I was able to see them, like, once a week. But still, that's not that much because of how much baseball we played and how much we got to travel. Um, it just takes a toll. Basically, this is going to be my third year, so you kind of get used to it a little bit more. You kind of get that freedom, but it's tough not seeing the people that you love. All right, Jack, thanks for joining us here tonight, and we're going to bring on Coach Cole again. Appreciate it. Great ball game. Thank you for having me. As you can hear, Coach coming on. I'm here. He's here. Get some microphones on. Yeah, oh, yeah. Especially now with the whole Facebook Live as well as the uh, the audio broadcast, we got a bunch of uh, microphones to put on. But coach, great ball game there. I, that was just a, a much better played ball game, much more quality uh, game than what we played last night. I felt like even though we put up 20 runs, I felt like the quality of game was just better. How, how'd you feel about that? Absolutely. You know, we we've been really good defensively this summer. And yesterday, I think we made three errors, which was very uncharacteristic for us. I think they kicked seven, so maybe it was the surface or what mm -hmm. was going on there. I don't know, but it has been very uncharacteristic for us to make a couple errors. So tonight, you know, that was a—I mean, it was a two-hour and twenty-minute baseball game. So, you know, if you look at the pitching side, we we struck out eleven, walked two, you know, made one error, which didn't really make too much of an impact. So it was it was clean on both sides. I mean, they, they did a good job too, and we just came out on top. Yeah, Bailey Wimberly, your starter, got you five innings. Gave up five hits, two runs, both earned uh, two walks and five strikeouts. Talk about uh, his outing and, and picking up a win. I know we've talked about our starters not getting a lot of length to this yeah. point, but Bailey did uh, did enough here tonight to, to get himself at least uh, eligible for that win. Well, the big thing, you know, it's early in the summer. We, we want to make sure we're taking care of our arms and that we're putting them in, the, in a situation to be successful. The biggest thing with Bailey tonight, you know, he threw five innings, but if you look over there at the pitch count number, he threw 59 pitches. So he was efficient in those five innings. I mean, heck, we probably could have ran him back out there, but we got guys that need to work, man. We we got pitchers that need to throw. So Bailey was outstanding. The biggest thing that helped him is he had two big double play balls, you know, where he was able to get himself, you know, out of not a, I wouldn't call it a jam, but he was able to get out of an inning with a base runner on pretty quickly in, in that middle infield. I think they had three on the night. I think Blank and Chip had one too. So again, you know, we've been really good defensively all year and those double plays make those pitchers' lives so much easier. Well, yeah, you mentioned those double plays and uh, from a guy, starting it from a guy that in Kobe Lopez that's used to playing a little bit of second base here in the summer, you switch him over to shortstop and give Brad Burkell a little bit of time tonight at second base and those guys just work together smoothly. Listen, we, 
We it's a priority for us. You know, me and Coach Canal working with the infielders and outfielders and the hitters and stuff. We we double plays are big. They have an opportunity to impact the game in such a big way. So that's a point of emphasis. And I don't know if, if the casual fan notices, but we actually flip some double plays, you know, in between innings, which is, you know, some people don't do that, but we believe in it because you could see today, you know, they had a little bit of momentum in those three innings. They get a guy on, you know, maybe something can happen, then boom, double play ball, the innings over. So, you know, that's a priority. And, and the biggest thing tonight, too, is we're able to give Christian Profit a night off, which he's yeah. been outstanding defensively. And, you know, he, he's been, I think, played every game since he's been here. Last night he, he had two, two errors, which – like I said, the service is rough. I don't know if I would call them errors necessarily, but they were hit right at him and they took some funky hops, so he's got to take credit for them. But he's been outstanding, and it's, it's, it's awesome to be able to take a guy of his caliber, give him a night off, slide Kobe over to shortstop, who hasn't played shortstop all summer, and then you're, you just click and just boom. You keep playing defense like you have all year. So that, that kind of depth is, is, is such a luxury. Well, Coach, thanks for joining us, and congrats on going 9-5. and five. Well, hang on one quick before I go. Hit it. Jack Murphy, man. Yeah, go That's ahead. That's why I had to send him up there, man. You know, he, you know, you, you, this is what summer baseball is about. You know, Jack's a guy that's played quite a bit, but he hasn't been necessarily an everyday guy out in California. So last summer he had a really good summer, and that's what, what piqued our interest in him. You know, and, and he came here this summer. He's, ha he's all the way across the United States of America, yep. you know, away from family, away from friends. He don't know nobody. You know, he, he started rough. I mean, let's just be honest. You yeah. know, he, was, he, he, he started rough, you know, and he came up to me and he said, Coach, let's go work. And, and I can respect that in a kid, and I think, you know, it's, it's such a thing to point out in his character and what he's here for and the commitment that he put into it. And, I mean, he's been on a tear the last three or four games. I mean, his average has gone from about 50 to 267, so that's a big jump. You know, and, and two doubles tonight. I think he had double the other night. So I just got to say I'm proud of him, and, and that's the culture, and that's the kind of – that's what we want our guys to buy into. We want them to come here to get better, and Jack Murphy's doing that, and I'm just proud of that kid. Absolutely. Well, all right. I'm going to open it up again. If you want to say anything more, you can. But if, you, if you're done, congrats on going 9-5. and five. Absolutely. No, I mean, I could sit here and talk about much of these guys. <laughs> hey, Jackson Green got on the board tonight, too. You know, Absolutely. He's been playing outstanding defense for us. And, you know, he's another one that got off to a slow start. But hopefully he heated up tonight with two hits. And one of them was a big one, man. One of them was a big one when the game was still, you know, you know, not, you know, it was never really, a, uh, you never felt good about that lead. But right. he was the one that kind of helped us get that lead and that big inning right there. So really proud of him, too. He's another guy that, that won't stop working. You know, he's, he's here to get better. And, and we, we love those guys. Absolutely. Well, again, Coach, congratulations on going eight and five, and uh, nine. we will not. Excuse me, nine and five. I'm looking at the wrong thing here. Nine and five. Yeah. So, see, Coach won't let me forget about that one. But back here tomorrow night when we take on Charlottesville. Good luck. Absolutely. Appreciate it. All right, that was head coach Zach Cole joining us on the broadcast. We're going to take it to another little short break, and then we'll be right back to wrap things up here from Waynesboro. <laughs> Mark your calendars now. The Valley Baseball League's All-Star Game is Sunday, July 7th, right here at Veterans Memorial Park on the JMU campus. Please plan on taking in all the action. While the game starts at 7.30 p.m., the fun starts at 3.30 p.m. with batting practice. The 60-yard dash and home run derby starts at 5.20. Tickets are $5 for adults and $3 for kids ages 3 to 12. And if they come in uniform, they get it for free. So mark those calendars, Sunday, July 7th, 7.30 p.m., right here in Veterans Memorial Park. You don't want to miss this. Come and join us and see tomorrow's Superstars play. Oh, back here in Waynesboro, there you see the final score of the, tonight's contest, 5-2 to two in favor of the Generals. And it was uh, really a story of the guys getting big outs when they needed to, big double plays turned. They they turned three of them, and uh, as Coach mentioned, with two with Bailey Wimberly on the mound, the other one with Zach Blankenship, and guys just doing a great job on the mound at keeping those runners off the pads, and once they did get on the pads, working around the trouble. Uh, so then some individual performances that we talked about a little bit. Jackson Green came up with a, a game-tying Two RBI triple down the right field line when the game was in doubt. The ball, two, game, two to nothing was the score in favor of the Braves at that point. He tied the ball game. Uh, and, you know, for Jackson, it's been a very slow start for him, but he's gotten on the board that two for three night. It really helps out the average. 
Uh, and then Jack Murphy. You know, we, we talked about Jack and, and putting in the extra work with Coach Cole, and uh, it's really shown here in his last few ball games. Uh, really in one, two, three, four, five of his last ball games. In his last five games, uh, his numbers are unbelievable. He was one for one against the Braves, one for three against the Rebels uh, with a double, so that took him to uh, two for four. Uh, the two for three night against the Cannons on Tuesday could have been three for four, uh, but uh, so that two for three takes him to six for seven. He was 0 for one last night, six of eight. Or excuse me, he was six for... Yeah, six for seven. And then, uh, as we mentioned, the three for four. It's just been uh, spectacular down the stretch. And uh, it's just good to see from a kid like Jack Murphy who's willing to work his butt off. But that does it here for the Waynesboro Generals. On behalf of the Valley Baseball League and the Generals, we thank you for joining us tonight. We also want to thank our title sponsors who made this live stream possible. And we'll hear from them in uh, just a moment. Join us tomorrow night, though, when our team, the Waynesboro Generals, comes right back here to Integrity Home Mortgage Park at Cade Collins Field, and we take on the Charlottesville Tom Sox. Remember, if you can't make it to the game in person, you can always watch us on Facebook Live, courtesy of Sheets Run and, Den Run and Done, and by Subway. Make it what you want. Now, for the Waynesboro Generals, I'm Ty Comer. Thanks again for joining us. Good night, everybody.